to start uh, as a moderator and we are going to <coughs> proceed it. Uh, sir, should I start? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I, Zainab Moin, welcome all of you to the first international conference on modern trends in humanities and social sciences, which is organized by the Academic Research and Policy Development Foundation, Islamabad, Pakistan, in collaboration with National Academy of uh, Sciences, Baku, Azerbaijan, Ostkadar University, Istanbul, Turkey, Khaja Farid University of Engineering and Information Technology, Rahim Yar Khan, and Azerbaijan Institute of Technology. I welcome all of uh, you uh, by saying that this is very good effort, which is uh, done for uh, addressing the issues faced during this pandemic. So this is how the general theme, the central theme of the conference is modern trend is trends in humanities and social sciences with special focus on COVID-19 scenario. Basically, contemporary world is passing through transitions. Technology, uh, technology led globalization enhanced connectivity that expedited capital, information, and human flows uh, that facilitated uh, Friedman flat world. And some unintentional flows, such as flows of virus, diseases, they were also never anticipated. For example, bird flu, swine flu, HIV, dengue, and Congo virus were alerts of globalization of diseases. COVID-19 was the first ever flu-scale global virus attack, which opened cascade of social, economic, moral, and even legal changes. Markets, business, businesses, mode of transactions, notion of profitability, service sector, moral obligations, almost everything is undergoing transformation due to COVID-19. This is how the interesting fields and topics were the sub-themes of this conference, which were chosen, and a lot of scholars and academicians throughout the world uh, and from Pakistan have uh, participated in this conference, which is from uh, August 3rd to August 5th, uh, inshallah. No now I uh, request engineer Dr. Hafiz Kadir to please recite some verses from the Holy Quran. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خل فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر
डॉक्टर अहमद रजाउल मुस्तफ़ा हु इज डायरेक्टर एकेडमी एकेडमिक रिसर्च एंड पॉलिसी डेवलपमेंट फाउंडेशन इस्लामाबाद is working as assistant professor professor at shaheed benazir bhutto university uh, shaheed uh, benazir abad he did his phd in economics from applied economics research center university of karachi his area of research interest is social protection social development poverty and sustainable development dr mustafa has vast teaching and research experience before his current job he taught in well reputed universities in pakistan and contributed to different projects under the umbrella of unicef and usaid dr mustafa has several research publications in well reputed journals in his respective domain as a director dr mustafa is accelerating the academic research and policy development foundation islamabad sir i request you to please give your welcome note uh thank you madam thank you very much and uh, assalamu alaikum to everyone i hope everyone is listening to me uh are you listening please yes sir you are visible audible okay fine thank you very much thank you very much i can hear you from istanbul to professor but uh, i'm uh, there is a problem on my side because there is a mic problem so uh, hopefully maybe i will not understand your uh, uh, discussion in a very uh, authentic way so i will try my best thank you so much and uh, respectable professors researchers and scholars welcome to all of you to join the first international conference on modern trends in humanities and social sciences 2021 in collaboration with the academic research and policy development foundation islamabad national academy of science uh, uh, baku azerbaijan ascot university istanbul turkey azerbaijan institute of technology and khwaja freed university of engineering and technology pakistan it is a big day for the academic research and policy development foundation because of organizing this wonderful 3 days international conference i congratulate to the team of arpdf and i feel proud to be the part of it as a part of arpdf i would like to give a brief introduction about the arpdf its mission objectives goals and achievements during uh, during the past the academic research and policy development foundation established in 2020 to provide the services in the research related activities to promote the quality research culture in the educational institute and development sector of pakistan it is providing the integrated research support services to researcher and organizations also enabling the researchers to produce the cutting edge research as solution to the socio economic problems and also enabling the organizations to adopt the innovation technologies and instrumental for the socio economic development by considering the objective of the arpdf the primary objective is to work for the social policy development and their implementation in the civil societies the more, uh, moreover it is working on the social economies and the sustainable development it promotes the operation of the programs policies laws and regulations based on the socio economic and religious thoughts 
it support and assist the civil societies through the collaboration of the government and other organization in the social circle. And at the last objective is to organize the research trainings, conference, publications, lectures, and the seminars on different themes based on socioeconomic and religious thoughts. The Academic Research and Policy Development Foundation is standing on such goals that are our task to achieve. We are serving as a source of expertise and advisory services for the government private sector and the non-government initiatives supporting the implementation of the Pakistan's environment and the government agenda. We are conducting the policy-oriented research on socioeconomic and religious thoughts from a broad multidisciplinary outlook. We are also delivering the policy guideline on the matter related to our mission. We are contributing to strengthen the socioeconomic and religious development in Pakistan. <coughs> the Academic Research and Policy Development Foundation has a wonderful achievements during a short period of time, even in COVID-19 recession. Let me share my screen to have a look on our achievements. I hope everyone is uh, watching my slide right now. Uh, no, sir, slides are not visible. Oh, okay, okay. Let me share it again. Uh, a message is showing on my screen that host is disabled the participant screen sharing. Please try to enable the screen on my side, please. It's not visible for us. Host has disabled my screen to share, please. Uh, Madam, can I share my screen right now? Yes, please. Uh, yes, sir. Thank please you. share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is it shared right now? Yes, sir. It is visible now. Okay. Fine. Fine. Please have a look on the screen. Uh, that uh, where I am uh, trying to share the achievements that we have been uh, got during the past uh, period of time. The ARPDF is running the two well-reputed research journals. The first one is the Journal of Social Research and Policy Development. And second research journal is the Journal of Interfaith Studies. Both are the multidisciplinary journals specific for the social sciences. We are working on it to get high indexing for these journals. Second research conference. The ARPDF is organizing the three days international conference today on modern trends in humanities and social sciences 2021 in collaboration with the National Academy of Science, Baku, Azerbaijan, Ascot University, Istanbul, Turkey, Azerbaijan Institute of Technology, and Hoja Freed University of Engineering and Technology, Pakistan. During the past, the ARPDF organized the four research seminars and also conducted the three research uh, trainings and workshops in the different slots and also organize the three webinars in different slots that I have been shared on the screen. In the last, one of the Urdu poet, Makhtoum Mahiyuddin said that, Hayat leke chalo, kainat leke chalo. 
हयात लेके चलो कायनात लेके चलो चलो तो सारे जमाने को साथ लेके चलो लेट मी वेलकम टू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट to become a part of academic research and policy development foundation and get a membership of it this forum is for you to perform and to play i welcome again to all the keynote speakers moderators presenters and participants in this wonderful conference good luck for all in pakistan zindabad thank you so much thank you so much dr ahmed raza uh, for uh, welcoming all of us to join the institute we all will definitely join once again thank you so much now i welcome professor dr sulaiman tahir who is vice chancellor khaja farid university of engineering and information technology rahim yar khan pakistan he is one of those scholars in pakistan who not only get recognition in the field of innovation and research he honestly mastered and explored new trends in research his field of research is chemical engineering he got his phd and post doctorate from grace university austria he wrote three books and his more than 50 research papers had published in international research journals he had completed five research projects uh, with the higher education commission grant of 28 million in 2000 he joined the institute of <clears throat> sorry he in 2000 he joined the institute of engineering and fertilizer research faisalabad as an assistant professor he was designated as a research associate from 2008 to 2011 at grace university austria he started his post doctorate in march 20, 2011 from dres university he was in charge of the center of excellence in the institute of engineering and fertilizer research faisalabad from 2011 and 2000 to 2012 in 2020 the government designated him as vice chancellor in khaja farid university of engineering and information technology sir i request you to please uh, deliver your welcome uh, speech thank you so much Ms. Zainab, uh, Vice Chair Sahib is coming now in few minutes, so uh, you can continue a little minutes more. Otherwise, I will continue. Okay. Uh, uh, let me also uh, no problem. Some let me also uh, correct myself as I have announced that it is Azerbaijan Institute of Technology, whereas it is Azerbaijan Institute of Theology. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for correcting uh, us. uh actually i was also thinking to discuss with uh, my respected keynote speakers and audience that the th the sub themes on which we have uh, received a lot of uh, papers were basically on post covid 19 effects then overall in society uh, and from sociological sociological perspective how it has affected then what communication ways were achieved and affected through uh, this because of this pandemic Uh, then few scholars have also shared their uh, thought on political aspects from law perspectives and even history and arts were also uh, touched by uh, capturing the islamic finance education and religious aspects so overall uh, this is very good idea because a lot of other conferences on pandemic 19 uh, are organized in pakistan and will be organized as it really affected our lives uh, but now i'll request the, uh, sir that if you want to add something so uh, it will be good uh this is how will come on uh, 9:30 so till that i will continue the process, proceeding further uh, in this conference we have received more than 100 papers Uh, on different topics uh, in which it included the political science linguistics literature and as well as economics and other fields as well uh, after the review process of these abstracts we have selected some papers to be presented in this conference and each and every session has the moderator as well to moderate the papers or moderate the session Uh, like that in the first session after our uh, guest speakers after our keynote speakers the first session will be about 
linguistic and literature the moderator will be dr samina sarwat hod department of humanities and social sciences from the himya khan and after that the second moderator of this session will be dr nasir mahmood international islamic university islamabad se and after that the second session will start at 2 the moderator of this session will be dr anwar farooq from khwaja fi university rehimia khan the topic of the this session will be political science and international relations after that the third session will be from 3 to 4 pm today the field will be political science and international relation the moderator will be dr mohammad zubair from gomal university dera ismail khan after that from tomorrow our next session will be start in that session we have keynote speakers as well and as well some sessions like the other days in the second day the keynote speaker will be will start our program at 9 am inshallah and our welcome speech will be delivered by the ajil shirinov from azerbaijan after that professor dr isa habibi from turkey he will be proceed as a keynote speaker after that keynote speaker will proceed further to dr ibrahim ozimir it uh, he is also professor of philosophy of yuskida university istanbul turkey and after that the keynote speaker will be dr abdur rashid from the institute of islamic economics international islamic university islamabad it will be our second day keynote speaker after these keynote speakers we, we are also having uh, three sessions parallel sessions in these sessions uh, the first field will be the first session will be about political science and international relation the moderator will be dr mohammad ali from karachi university pakistan after that the second session will be religious studies the moderator of this session will be dr sayed abdur rahman shah saab and after that the third, third session of this day will also about the religious studies and the moderator of this session will be dr farooq hasan from nad university karachi now we warmly welcome was the vice chancellor of khwajafi university he joined us and now he will proceed uh, moderator please call him on dais uh, we welcome professor dr sulaiman tahir vice chancellor khwaja farid university of engineering and information technology rahim yar khan pakistan to sir please deliver your welcome speech Uh, sir your voice is not audible hello yes now it's okay yes sir sorry okay. bismillah rahman rahim thank you for providing me the opportunity to welcome the participants of first international conference on modern trends in humanitarian and the social sciences first of all this type of the conferences actually is uh, for knowledge sharing to develop some best practices in the region to follow the modern trends in the developed world uh, to implement in the developing countries regarding khwaja farid university of engineering and information technology we situated in south punjab in pakistan and alhamdulillah 
our university is ranked in in in, in green matrix and also with the other international forums uh, in the quality education so keeping in view nowadays the muslim countries as well as especially in the south asia we have to focus on developing the behavior of the nations we have to develop the modern technologies we have to work on the best practices being used in 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 the developed countries so this is one of the opportunity to all of us that we can share our experience we can propose some best technology trends how we can improve the learning outcomes of our graduates actually and uh, where is the problem in in south asia especially the students are not focusing the learning outcomes in the universities if we gather the scientific community if we work together if we follow the good practices from the other nation i i, I got this so this is the collaboration of actually five different academic institutions khwaja farid university of engineering and information technology national academy of science and baku azerbaijan azerbaijan institute of technology uskurdar university of istanbul and academy research and the policy development foundation islamabad pakistan so all of the co host of this 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 conference and main the organizers i welcome you all and the thank you all of you for contributing and providing this platform to the young generation and to learn from the best practices from our our academicians and from other countries so thank you very much and i think so this conference will give us the valuable guidelines to establish the new trends uh, leading to the success either in the technology either in the social behavior are to develop the best nations in our countries thank you very much thank you so much professor dr suleiman tahir for your uh, cooperation and providing us such uh, uh, platforms to share our ideas thank you so much once again now i invite our uh, first keynote speaker professor dr mohammad zawal haq who is the director general of the islamic research institute and professor of sharia and islamic law at international islamic university islamabad pakistan where he has been a dean of the faculty of sharia and law from 2010 to 2014 and chair of department of sharia from 2008 to 2010 at present he is serving as director paigham e pakistan center for peace reconciliation and reconstruction studies iri which is institute of Re international Re research institute and director international center of excellence in sira studies he is also working as an editor of reputed research journal islamic studies He was a senior Fulbright Fellow and a professor at the Center for Dialogue at uh, Exeter University um, in 2013 and 14. He holds his PhD in Comparative Fiqh, which is Islamic Law, from the Institute uh, of Theology, Zaytun University, Tunis. He has uh, he had his postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Glasgow, UK, in 2005. University of Warsaw Poland in 2010 uh, in from Spain in University of Bilbao in 2013 and in King Abdullah uh, bin Abdul Aziz International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural uh, Dialogue Vienna Austria uh, in 2015 he is also the founding president uh, of the republic of kazakhstan uh, sorry he was also uh, the founding president republic of kazakhstan awarded him medal of the honor of the 
Congress of the Leaders of the World and Traditional Religions in 2018 in recognition of his efforts for promotion of global peace. Uh, he is my teacher as well. I uh, welcome Professor Dr. Muhammad Zawal Haq to uh, please give his speech. Uh, sorry for inconvenience, Professor Dr. Uh, Muhammad Ziaul Haksa is not uh, present now. He will uh, join this conference in few minutes. We have to wait for one or two minutes. Uh, so, Ms. Uh, moderator, please proceed uh, by yourself a little bit. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. <clears throat> Uh, actually, I just want to uh, share that when the appearance of new coronavirus disease, uh, which is known as COVID-19, was first reported in December 2019 in uh, Wuhan, China, so the number of cases has increased uh, and not only in China, but in the world. The appreciation level of at least if I will take the side of the academics, I would just share my experience that uh, I found that a lot of efforts academically were taken because from the uh, school level to the level of universities, everyone was all of a sudden uh, that what will happen now, what how we will do if we will not interact face to face. So uh, uh, I will appreciate all my uh, respected uh, professors and vice chancellors that on different levels and at different times they have provided us such platforms where we have expressed our feelings about uh, the effects or impact of COVID-19 on academics and overall uh, socially in the society, especially uh, mentally. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, sessions were uh, held and a lot of uh, initiatives were taken to address the uh, mental uh, health of the people during this uh, pandemic, uh, whatever they have faced. So uh, this is how I will appreciate uh, the, you know, the, these four institutes that they have generally addressed every aspect of life where where we will inshallah learn and we will take ideas that how psychologically such uh, pandemic situations can be treated. So uh, once again, it is good effort and uh, I uh, appreciate that uh, a lot of different uh, keynote speakers are there from different part of the world to share with us their experience as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Madam, please uh, call the next keynote speaker because Dr. Mohammad Ziaul Haq is uh, on the way to his office. He will be uh, joined after 10. So uh, you have to call the next uh, keynote speaker, uh, Professor. Okay, okay sir. Thank you so much. Uh, now I welcome Professor uh, our keynote speaker, Professor Nezat Tehran. Uh, who is well known psychiatrist and also the founding rector of uh, Uskandar University. Takılmış, sizi anons ediyorlar. Evet. Evet, uh, sorry, sir. Yes, uh, Professor Nevzan is connecting. It will be ready in two minutes. Okay. Yes, uh, let me uh, let Can me. I proceed? Yes, yes. Let me just, you know, uh, express my gratitude to uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Suleyman uh, Tahiri for this, uh, you know, giving us this opportunity. I think it, this is uh, a good uh, uh, first step of a cooperation between three, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, countries in the region, Azerbaijan and Pakistan and Turkey, uh, I do hope this will be uh, as a good example for other universities, for other higher education institutions to, to, to start similar uh, initiatives because the problems is besetting all region can only be solved on the, uh, through uh, you know, uh, knowledge and scientific research. And in this spirit, we need more uh, you know, cooperation and sharing best examples and learning from each other, and maybe also through uh, you know uh, uh, agreements, you know uh, student and uh, uh, staff exchange programs. Uh, you know we have a very good, uh, a very successful Erasmus Plus program with the European universities, and I do hope we have the same thing with the with the Pakistani universities, and we have also very good uh, cooperation with uh, you know or 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 neighbor with Azerbaijan. And we do hope to, uh, to, to develop the same thing with the Pakistan and Pakistan and higher education institution in Pakistan. Yes, sir, uh, exactly. We will, inshallah, have, uh, I hope, further such academic sessions, inshallah. Thank you so much. Now, in, I invite Professor Nozat Terhan, uh, who is a well known psychiatrist and also the founding director of Oskadar yes. University. Yeah. As a He's scientist who has carried the results to his yeah. personal and social life, he transferred his knowledge of psychiatric expertise, which he has pursued uh, over the years with a great effort and research, to over 150 research articles published in national and international reputed journals. Because of his works presented in visual and written media, he has reached a large amount of audience in Turkey, Currently, he is Askadar University's founder and the president of the Supreme Council of Management, and he is leading Turkey's first neuropsychiatry hospital, um, uh, which is Brains Hospitals Management Board presidency duties. His books have sold over 1 million copies. Professor Tarhan has 135 research papers, more than 50 of which are indexed in uh, uh, WOS journals. I request Professor Narzat Tarhan to please deliver his speech. Sir, please. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, uh, for your uh, this uh, conference uh, and, and uh, this uh, important uh, the uh, the, uh, the conference I think the conference very important for uh, psychiatric uh, for uh, psychosocial uh, problems uh, solution for uh, or uh, so, social cycle problems and uh, our the our uh, similar uh, the civilization uh, region, uh, Pakistan, Azerbaijan, the, another country, uh, we need a lot of uh, cultural uh, uh, cultural contact, uh, uh, cultural relationship. Uh, for this reason, uh, I give a very important this uh, conference. Uh, uh, to, today, I want to speak uh, about our university uh, presentation. Uh, uh, my share is uh, possible. Yes, yes, Ojam. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what is the post pandemic global well being manifesto? Uh, global well being manifesto is uh, we uh, presented this man manifesto uh, last. Uh, last April, April, uh, April, uh, and uh, post-pandemic uh, psychosocial problems, post-pandemic cultural problems, post-pandemic post spiritual problems uh, very quickly uh, increase. For this reason, uh, we, uh, prepare, uh, we, we have prepared this uh, concentration. Why uh, have we declared the post-pandemic global well-being manifesto? As Üsküdar University Senate members, we felt the need to 
utter concern the of uh, offer solution for the future of the world and we are concerned about the general despair in the world especially our society due to pandemic that makes us uh, think about uh, need for a global destruction the, we can say a great reset uh, as a covid-19 uh, as the covid-19 pandemic to which uh, to which humanity and uh, exposed has turned into the tragedy we see the global justice and environment problems have become evidence despite strong and advanced health system it draws our attention that feeling of weakness in education helplessness loneliness and hopelessness uh, are uh, wide spread all over the world decision makers need different opinion for the world to improve we feel the responsibility to uh, open the state our determinations our suggestions for the improvement of global peace peace and natural beauty and individual happiness happiness uh, uh, i want to explain the uh, california syndrome what is the california syndrome very interesting the hocam o, altta sunum şeyine dokunursanız o ekranın sağ köşesinde daha büyük görünür Heh, tamam hocam çok güzel tamam what hocam. is the, what is the Ka california syndrome the civilization crisis of the world not only western culture now, now uh, all the world affect this the california syndrome well, there are four symptoms uh, four features the california syndrome this hedonism hedonistic satisfaction is common uh, common aim aim uh, the aim philosophy hedonism hedonistic satisfaction hedonistic aims hedonistic goals and secondly egocentricity and narcissism very common and there are in uh, in usa uh, some books about the uh, Narc uh, the narcissism epidemics, narcissism pandemics books, uh, I I see, uh, and uh, the this is a second uh, uh, item related to em empathetic er erosion, empathy erosion related, uh, uh, estrangement and loneliness and other symptoms and happiness, unhappiness, depression, uh, and uh, and suicide and violent and uh, 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 violent uh, uh, violent to women uh, the view opposite to women uh, violent the, this is the common problem western culture uh, started but common the hollywood culture this is california syndrome is same we can say as the uh, uh, Hollywood syndrome, similar. And uh, why uh, from uh, I am a psychiatrist, uh, I uh, I uh, I have connection connection for uh, the neuroscience connection, neuroscience and civilization. Uh, this is a big uh, a big word, but uh, there are is evidence based. Uh, evidence-based uh, relation uh, if it uh, sorry if it, we don't have frontal lobes we would uh, we wouldn't have sorry uh, we wouldn't have real civilization and morality and this is not uh, the hypothesis this is is this is reality uh, because uh, the, the, the left one schizophrenic brain there is no frontal area non-functional frontal area in schizophrenia and the healthy brain and healthy uh, healthy function function there are uh, frontal area and the addictive brain uh, the, uh, the healthy plain brain and uh, right uh, brain after ecstasy uh, do you uh, do you know ecstasy is a synthetic uh, synthetic psychostimulant very common uh, psychotropic 
drug is uh, uh, affected the uh, big uh, big uh, stimulant, big uh, addiction dependence effect the the uh, uh, methamphetamine uh, group uh, family uh, drug. And uh, after ex ecstasy, one dose ecstasy, this frontal area absent. Frontal area serotonin receptors fi finished. This is very dangerous situation. Uh, the the, the chronical using ecstasy produced the schizophrenic disorder. The frontal lobe uh, training very important. Frontal lobe training brain and uh, the co cognition, emotion, and behavior uh, uh, together we have uh, we have managed managed from frontal uh, uh, frontal area. <clears throat> Uh, 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 I can explain about COVID and uh, post-pandemic uh, relationship. Uh, yeah, it is um, it is treat, threat or opportunity. Uh, is it uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemics? Our this uh, our research about the COVID pandemics, the fears, uh, uh, fears, perceptions and uh, emotions and uh, post-COVID uh, post um, maturation. Individual uh, effect, our freedom has been curtailed, but our ability to delay gratification uh, and pleasure has developed the physical and mental well-being decreased, but we had more time to improve ourselves and strengthen family ties. Our pleasure and speed-oriented life was restricted. But we were able to discover new area of interest, social dimension. We, we did not exercise some of the rights, but we real, realized uh, but uh, that order how right. And uh, as, uh, third dimension, globally, we were being very rough on nature, mm -hmm. but we learned that we should be more careful about global pollution and climate change. We learned that economic growth is not enough. Material well-being is not enough. But we also have to consider spiritual well-being. Fourth, fourth dimension, universal and supernatural. Defined as a post-traumatic crowd, it has uh, uh, enabled us to recognize the disadvantage billions on, in the world uh, who cannot uh, even reach clean water. We, we were able to reduce our selfishness and question uh, hedonism. hedonism. We, uh, we could think of the consequence of the income, the legal inequality in the world. Uh, in a good way, a new life philosophy, opportun philosophy opportunity has emerged for us. Of course, if we can to lesson. And our mm -hmm. research uh, results, uh, the psychosocial growth scale, uh, we have we had the uh, 6,813 uh, case studies uh, in uh, April 2020, all over the Turkey. Uh, this, this results, our first, uh, first results uh, related uh, study, according to related study, the priority of the things I care about in life has changed. Percentage, uh, the 59 percentage. Uh, my interest in spiritual issues increased, and I realized that I can handle the, uh, the weaknesses. And I can accept the event as they are. I started to give more importance to my social relationship. And I uh, understand the value of the things I have. This is the our cultural <coughs> cultural thesis. This is the, uh, the post-social broad scale uh, items there are. And, uh, and the Conclusions uh, uh, related to uh, study, 
studies, uh, five disrupted feature and three opportunities, pending our psychosocial well-being, our freedom, our body comfort, and uh, it negatively affected our social relationships. We felt that what imminent, but it also gave us three gifts, free time, psychosocial resilience and endurance training and uh, opportunity uh, opportunity to reboil, uh, revive, uh, rebuild human nature, uh, nature, nurture and yeah. universal values that we abandoned and lost. Uh, post pandemic well-being manifesto related this reality is today despite being defined as the most vulnerable being regardless of country race color culture religion belief or ideology we see that the human character insatiable and in abundant egocentric who does not care about any purpose other than hedonistic classification lacks with this uh, high human values come uh, comes to the crew that's uh, uh, why we signed this declaration uh, uh, <clears throat> to make our future and our beautiful blue planet more peaceful more sustainable fairer and habitable the first item uh, in this tragic process that humanity is going through, we are this to global increases in the in, 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 in inequality, economical justice, injustice, and po poverty. We foresee that in intercontinental migration uh, will increase more, uh, and we want to this uh, this to be noticed. We want to that the world should pay attention to the construction of bridge, not walls. The construction of bridge, not walls. The Eastern and Western. And uh, we observe uh, that inequalities in, in and in access to the health services have increased much more during the pandemic process. We declared that uh, that people living in poor countries with limited access to clean water and healthy are uh, subject to economical neglect. And that this is not human. Uh, as a example, uh, example, African people. And uh, we are concerned that <laughs> Psychological disturbance experiences during the pandemic process will increase unhappiness, loneliness, substance abuse, violence, depression, and suicidal tendencies globally. We are worried uh, that the rules and the countries will not attach importance to this situation as, as much as they attach the significance to the arms, trade, and global domination. Uh, we demand an understanding to peace, not an individual but a global peace that uh, takes care of the welfare of uh, all humanity. And lack of the social relations has increased the need to secure attachment more, living close to the anxiety of the future and contact death department video. There is a noise, please. Can you cancel this noise? So I can I can continue. There are uh, there are three, uh, a few slides. Okay, please go okay. ahead, Hocam. Right. For these reasons, we have to emphasize the importance of living for importance uh, to global wisdom value in the 20, uh, 21st century and considering them in health, culture, and education policies, we declare that it is a mistake to think only oneself in search of meaning as a personal person who thinks and takes responsibility. Uh, during the pandemic process, we have, sorry, uh, during the pandemic process, we have started to realize that we have we behaved very roughly to nature, and it was a, uh, it, it was as if. Nature started to have revenge 
on us. We are merciful, merciless, uh, mercilessly killing nature. We are uh, abusing the ecosystem. We are watching desperately reaching the panic value limit, the global warming and uh, environment pol pollution. We realize that we were deceiving uh, ourselves because of the desire for power, growth, and ambition of to dominate. If we cannot develop a growth that respects nature, medical science that respects human and non-human, uh, and a policy that value that human spirit and increasing injustice will end the human species along the, with nature, uh, we declare that we uh, we should rise future generation duration, what and understanding of life that respects nature, if more balanced, not destructive and producer value while consuming. Uh, we don't see the we don't see the panic crisis, but not just as a threat to humanity, but as an opportunity to reach hu high human values also. Uh, our biggest enemies are prejudice, discrimination, and justification. Our biggest needs are empathy, justice, and trust. Empathy, justice, and trust. We believe that the global scale of justice balancing the scale of uh, personal benefits in the most important in primary, primary reality, we declare that unless global justice is attached, uh, is achieved, there will be no peace in our own home. Uh, we regret to see that uh, the world is full of conflict, that cooperation cannot be made in, in the face of uh, this global catastrophe, that thus discrimination and bias are increasing. When is creature capable of destroying is in own kind? We have seen this inhuman slaughter, uh, uh, slaughter the match host by all wars and nuclear power. We believe that a belief, a, a life dominate uh, um, not by polarization, but by common ideas, by the interest of all society, not all own, by equality rather than power will be sustainable. And we declare that the main value in the, uh, in the, and first century in wisdom, and that without global justice and global peace, it will remain just a word. We undertake, uh, we undertake that uh, we will strive to ensure, ensure that uh, wisdom does not remain merely so-called, so-called and abstract attitude, but a part of our daily life and a value of our life practice, a value of, uh, of our life practice. And uh, uh, as a result, uh, as a result, we invite the, uh, the world leaders, philosophers, and, uh, sorry, and uh, uh, whole public to think of random darkness and to implement to without personal benefit and preconditions. We all need a sweet smile, a, a beautiful word, beautiful word, sweet smile, a loving look, a warm touch. It is very cheap for, for behavior is very cheap, not rich. We declare, we declare that awareness uh, that can touch both mind and heart, hearts, minds and hearts can provide social happiness and individual well-being after the COVID-19 trauma. Ever the small step toward the community carries great hopes. If there is a life, there is hope. Uh, of course, if we can learn a lesson, we presented in uh, it to public uh, April two thousand second Earth Day. Uh, with our best wishes uh, uh, behalf on uh, uh, the Yusuf University Senate. Thank you very much for your 
attention. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. I finished. Are there any questions? What was the reaction? Yes, what was the reaction from the global community to your manifesto, uh, Professor oh, uh, Tahran? We, we, we see a lot of good uh, big, uh, big uh, uh, feedback, uh, a lot of, and Manchester University, Stanford University uh, sent us a good uh, a support our, uh, our, uh, our initiative our initiative and uh, the, uh, the first uh, uh, impression is uh, first impression about the, uh, this uh, our presentation our uh, our uh, initiative manifesto uh, is a, a very uh, the uh, uh, positive feedback we we see a lot of positive feedback but uh, sometimes I think the, the, I need the, uh, the, uh, the time. Yeah, new. Uh, it's, it's take time. Yeah, take time. Yeah, we yes. need take time. Yeah. Thank you very much. But, but, but let me share this with our uh, friends in Pakistan and also Azerbaijan uh, who are also watching us. This initiative by our founding director, uh, Nevza Tahran, was the first uh, after, you know, during pandemic by a university uh, to, to publish a manifesto. <laughs> Everybody knows, you know, uh, it's uh, 1848, uh, Karl Marx and uh, Frederick Engels, they published the communist manifesto, then they, they changed the future of the world. So we hopefully this, pan this uh, manifesto by Yuskida University, which is shared with all universities. And uh, so far we have a very good feedback from the universities in the US and in Europe and now, maybe in Asia, uh, you know, to publicize, to also to underline the, the, the role of universities in the 21st century societies. I think it will be, it, we also proud, uh, proud of uh, Professor Nevzat Tarhan because it was, you know, uh, the Muslim uh, university as a Muslim, uh, 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 you know, founding rector is, uh, it was uh, played a leading role uh, in, 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 in uh, you know, uh, in finalizing this manifesto. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you so much, much uh, Professor Nazat and Professor Ibrahim as well on sharing his uh, views. Now I invite our second keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Muhammad Zawal Haq, uh, who is the Director General of the Islamic Research Institute and Professor of Sharia and Islamic Law at International Islamic University, Islamabad, Pakistan where he has been a Dean of the Faculty of Sharia and Law from 2010 to 14 and Chair of Department of Sharia from 2008 to 2010. At present, uh, he is serving as Director of Pakistan Center for Peace, Reconciliation and Reconstruction Studies, um, uh, uh, IRI and Director International Center of Excellence in Sira Studies. He is also working as an editor of reputed research journal, Islamic Studies. He was a senior Fulbright fellow and professor at the Center for Dialogue at Exeter University uh, in 2013 to 14. He holds his PhD in comparative fic from the Institute uh, of Theology, Zaytun University, Tunis. He had postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Glasgow, UK in 2005, University of Warsaw, Poland in 2010, uh, and in Spain 2013, and in King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue, Vienna, Austria 2015. He is also founding president, uh, the founding president, uh, Republic of Kazakhstan, awarded him Medal of the Honor of the Congress of the Leaders uh, of World and Traditional Religions in 2018 in recognition of his efforts for promotion of global peace. Dr. Zawal Haq will join us within five to 10 minutes. So being uh, his student, I would also share that 
uh, he has the capacity like i'm not uh, i'm just sharing because i have a very close interaction with him uh, in iri and in international islamic university that he uh, during his pegham pakistan role and in islam uh, in the research center he really encourages uh, the young academicians that they should work in all fields especially when it comes to reconciliation and then uh, other in the in the religious tolerance and in the dialogue areas so till uh, dr zaulak joins us uh, i would like to share uh, with you that uh, uh, i hope a lot of you must have attended that conference as well which was held uh, which was held in um, on may 19 2021 by university government college women university sialkot where from islamic perspective from religious perspective uh, one of the indonesian scholar has well said that islam being a complete and universal religion takes in to account all the physical emotional psychological and spiritual needs and aspects of human life life and during these testing times of covid-19 pandemic when there is a lot of stress fear and confusion islamic teachings provides practical and logical solutions in mitigate in mitigating the situation now and this i am sharing his views so i thought at it is relevant to the pandemic 19 so uh, i was also one of the speaker in the one of the sorry presenter in that conference as well so this is a, a lot of uh, views were very interesting so this is how i am sharing with you that one of the speakers said that uh, maintenance of good personal and community hygiene was the essential half of the half of the islamic faith and prophet had prescribed to ensure and strictly practice quarantine social distancing and lockdowns as measures to control the spread of pandemic like covid-19 because a lot of people will asking questions that uh, why we are being stopped to go to mosques why we are uh, not allowed to have congregational worships so we do find a lot of examples from prophetic time as well there in such pandemics a strictly quarantine practices were observed social distancing uh, distancing was was recommended and encouraged and and then indonesian uh, ambassador also mentioned that islam because indonesia is one of the country uh, who has very badly uh, who was who is very badly affected because of pandemic so he said that islam celebrated good healthy life and had allowed some rules to be relaxed in extraordinary or life threatening situation and then uh, he uh, why he was specially specifically talking talk, talking from islamic perspective because a lot of people uh, fortunately or unfortunately they were Uh, addressing the problems from religious perspective so this is how uh, he mentioned and cited few examples of exemption for muslims from holding congregational prayers when there were chances of some harm such as rain or enemy or islam urge solidarity uh, social responsibility and care for the poor and needy and prohibited holding so this is how even if we look at the example of our own country uh, we do observe that uh, yes poors were also too much affected because a lot of jobs were uh, not there uh, because of this lockdown uh, the economic uh, uh, instability was also observed so muslim at least muslim should therefore reflect and pray for allah's help and protection of course uh, his speech was one of the inspirational speech because he said that no single country was immune from covid-19 virus as the increased globalization had accelerated accelerated the spread of viruses and and as countries around the globe started closure of their borders so the pandemic uh, wrecked uh, with the global uh, supply chain the pandemic forced all the fashion entertainment sports technology events uh, to be cancelled and uh, a lot of things were switched online which were maybe not possible at first uh, strike of pandemic 19 at first lockdown so this is how uh, the psycho uh, uh, the psychologically the mental effect of uh, uh, pandemic on human life was because of the economic consequences uh, as well 
because first there was spread of disease and then there was uh, a lot of hunger uh, problems in the sense like people were people were facing a lot of hunger so what happened that uh, this is not that only underdeveloped countries have faced this developed country have also faced a lot of problems the the reason was that why we were encouraged why we survived was to encourage uh, was was encouraged by our religious leaders our academic scholars that they, they were the ones who has given us these ideas that it's okay such situa situations can be part of a uh, human life the how we are supposed to behave that matters and for that uh, a lot of religious and other other scholars have also contributed uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, share uh, giving me chance to share my views now i request uh, and again welcome professor dr uh, mohammad zaul haq who is the director general of islamic research institute and professor of sharia and islamic law uh, also serving as director pehame pakistan center for peace reconciliation and reconstruction studies iri and director international center for excellence in syria studies he has uh, from 2010 uh, to 2015 he has uh, different uh, availed different doctoral fellowships at university of glasgow university of vodka uh, university of viana uh, 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 in uh, interreligious intercultural dialogue and he was also awarded uh, the medal of the honor by the um, president republic of uh, kazakhstan uh, in 2018 for a recognition of his efforts for promotion of global peace i welcome uh, as my teacher uh, i humbly welcome professor dr mohammad zawal haq to please uh, deliver his speech bismillah ar rahman ar rahim uh, i am thankful to the chair of the session uh, all the participants from pakistan and uh, from other countries from turkey from central asia and uh, i'm thankful to dr shahid habib and uh, uh, dr zainab for giving me this opportunity i will not take much of your time but i would like to draw your attention to a very big contemporary challenge that we are facing in muslim societies particularly in pakistan the present images of muslim societies are not good some of the muslim societies they are uh, being portrayed uh, with brutality fanaticism hatred and disorder similarly there are tendencies of terrorism due to these images many extreme acts of ugliness have become associated with the muslim societies and this is unfortunate if we look into the attitude of the people we feel that there appears to be uncontrolled emotions which sweep everything before it preventing the islamic resurgence from being harnessed muslims need reason and argument to make sense of islamic passion the images that i have already mentioned stem partly from a lack of understanding of islam proactively and partly from the failure by muslims to explain themselves the results are predictable the hatred feeds on hatred muslims need to be con concerned about their societies and actually aware of its tensions and those generated from the world around it their religious leadership unfortunately obsessed with the belief of perfection their faith is perfect no doubt but they are not they like the mirrors which show only perfection present 
discourse of Muslim religious leadership and political leadership is capable of instigating for violence, but it will have no contribution in the renaissance of Islam and Islamic civilization. <coughs> Sorry. The use of theology for political purposes and for the political power has created not only serious problem for social stability and integrity of Muslim societies, such as Pakistan, but also created impediments of true understanding of Islamic teaching. No doubt that classical Muslim jurists used to repeat that political power is necessary to safeguard the interests of religion, but they are warned also at the same time that political power is fundamentally corrupting of human consciousness and the mandate of justice. Therefore, uh, it is very important that we in Muslim societies should follow Islamic teachings in our political matters, but we should not use theology and religious slogans for political objectives and for political gains. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are many personal gains and even for these personal gains, we are using religious slogans and symbols. The use of religious slogans and symbols for political purposes has created a reactionary mindset in Muslim societies. The societies such as Pakistan are facing various internal and external challenges as a result of persisting use of religious card, which is resulted into the production of reactionary approach to emerging challenges. The issue such as violence, uh, falling educational standards, and power crisis have been neglected, which has created an emergency-like situation in the society. It is observed that at times, external forces are viewed as being slowly responsible for the denting challenges and little responsibility is taken to respond to the issue seriously. In spite of every, uh, in spite of even an emergency-like situation, Little, little consensus is found on persisting issues. Consequences are seen behind every positive or negative event in the country and in the society. In this scenario, there is a dire need to shift the frame of thinking. These historical facts has contributed in the elevation of aggravated scene of social insecurity and instability that followed the age of colonialization and has generated a state of imbalance and disorientation in the Muslim consciousness. This imbalance has manifested itself in a series of events of extreme ugliness, the primary victim of which, of course, were Muslims themselves. Extreme acts of ugliness uh, perpetuated in the name of Islam were stark manifestation of a way of thinking that has come to value a superficial sense of independence, control, security, and power, regardless of their model antecedents or consequences. Doctrinally, radicalism became the main vehicle for rationalizing and often institutionalizing such uh, extreme ugliness in the Muslim societies, such as Pakistan. Socially, radicalism found fertile ground in the culture of alienation and an anxiety that seemed to prevail in the Muslim world in general, and more particular in Pakistani society. The moral disengagement of the perpetrators of acts of cruelty and what might be called the social death of the victim. In such a context, moral disengagement often became a necessary tool of survival. Moral disengagement does not refer only to a general reluctance to make moral judgment, 
but even more to diffusion of moral responsibility to anything or any one but oneself the attitude of moral disengagement is resulted into production of undesirable attitudes such as hate prejudice and ignorance the adoption of socially and morally irresponsible language against others is also outcome of moral disengagement moral disengagement and social deaths are common elements of an environment that uh, has uh, uh, justifying acts of cruelty and uh, um, other unwanted acts in the muslim societies so i always suggest and in even in this study i would like to suggest that changing the reactionary culture in society requires educating people about how to take responsibility in order to develop society positively in this regard serious steps needed to be taken at multiple levels such as through education media and interpretation of faith education is viewed as a powerful tool to reshape reshape a society's thinking to cultivate the culture of proactive thinking and approach the education system needs to be reviewed in term of policy curriculum teaching and learning in the classroom students needs to be provided opportunities to be engaged in the process of reflection in order to make themselves understand the challenge of society the process of teaching and learning needs to be transferred from root uh, learning to action based learning students need to be involved in different projects to instruct them about how to be engaged in solving the issue of society by taking responsibility the role of media cannot be overlooked in educating the mass in pakistan the media sometimes create hype by focusing on conspiracy theories in this regard the media needs self reflection about how it can educate and motivate the masses to take responsibility in order to respond to the challenges of society actively the media needs to focus on the real issue of society and educate the people on how they can contribute to the society along with challenges positive activities needs to be highlighted to provide examples of good practices in the society to present an accurate objective view we must learn to balance being observance and action both two rules are uh, roles are very important for the future of muslims it is not a good time to look at muslims the earlier breadth of vision tolerance and self assurance are missing a new element of hysteria shrill and discordant has entered presently the understanding of islam and the understanding of the seera of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is possible only after going behind these distorted images the burden on muslims intellectuals today is heavy indeed there ought to be no question that islam inspired one of the most humanistic tolerant and inter- intellectually rich civilization but it would be serious error to rely on any historical inevitabilities just because muslims achieved moral greatness once does not necessarily means that they will do so again we are always talking our intellectuals our political leadership our religious leadership about the past but unfortunately uh, we are unable to discuss about the future futuristic vision futuristic strategies and methodologies of way forward are missing not only in our thinking but also in our approaches and our actions here i would like to conclude my discussion uh with an other point that is related to the dual thrust of the sharia al islamia sharia al islamia it has 
proactive as well as reactive characteristics but the sharia does not rely on reactive actions but it rely on the proactive actions and unfortunately we on the name of sharia uh, are always working as reactionaries and we have not ready to adopt the proactive strategies imam ghazali when he discussed three sharia he discussed the dual nature in detail and the dual factor of maqasid maqasid sharia is evident in the use of term ibqa and hifz which may be called preservation and protection shatabi considers these two aspects of hifz the first he says is what affirms the elements and establish its foundation the second what repels actual or expected disharmony each purpose of sharia however has a positive or aggressive aspect and a negative or defensive aspect from the positive aspect the interest is scored by establishing what is required by the sharia through each of its maqasid similar to the objectives of sharia the seerah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam needed to be discovered preserved uh, proactively the preservation is linked with proactive ways of defining seerah of holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam while protective ways symbolize reactions on other ways throughout the history biographers of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tried to explore the various dimensions of the seerah of holy prophet peace be upon him proactively but in our actions this proactive approach is missing whatever we are discussing in seera whatever we are trying to uh, discover in the seera of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is in a reactionary mood when something bad is happening in the west or somewhere else in the world we try to react on that situation i suggest instead of reacting we should move towards the proactively we should engage with the seerah of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the uh, sharia and with other islamic sciences proactively so that we can get a way forward from it and we should be able to think about the future of uh, islam the proactive thinking and proactive approaches will encourage uh, taking responsibility for one's life or for society this is totally missing whatever bad is happening in our society whatever faults are in our societies whatever weaknesses are in our, our societies uh, on the basis of relying on conspiracy theory Uh, we are considering it acts of enemies and relinquishing ourselves from any responsibility to look into the failure of our society um, i suggest, suggest that uh, proactive people and proactive societies they recognize that they are responsible for facing challenges to improve their situations and don't just sit around blaming blaming external forces for their failure proactive nations understand that strength as well as uh, proactive nations understand their strengths as well as their shortcomings they celebrate their strengths and work to improve their shortcomings they develop the insight to anticipate future challenges and devise doable strategies to deal with them wisely so we also need to adopt proactive strategy uh, once the adoption of proactive approaches will result into formation and spread of islamic civilization the human kind has witnessed the rise and fall of several civilization perhaps no rise has been more astonishing unprecedented and fast than that of islamic civilization both 
for the speed and breadth of its geographical expansion as well as for the development of its rich cultural heritage. Uh, the Islamic civilization has provided in the past a remarkable coherent system, a worldview and a way of life that gave proactively meanings and directions to lives of millions of Muslims for some 12 centuries. We need to adopt same proactive approaches for the future of the Muslim societies, all Muslim societies, particularly Pakistani Muslim society. And uh, I'm thankful to all the panelists and the participants of uh, this conference, the organizers of this conference. To, through this conference, we have the opportunity to meet many learned scholars, partic particularly from the Central Asia. Uh, I would like to conclude my presentation with a verse which is indicating it is actually part of the poetry. It is in Urdu. Um, uh, Non-Urdu knowing persons may not able to understand. But I just like to say that this is actually indicating that how we can uh, improve our societies with uh, taking responsibilities. Ujjad mausam mein reet dharti pe fasil boi thi chandni ki. Ab usme ugne lage andhere. तो कैसा जी में मलाल रखना तो मैं ऐसा करना कोई जुगनू कोई सतारा संभाल रखना मेरे अंधेरों की फिक्र छोड़ो तुम अपने घर का ख्याल रखना थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Zawluk, for your valuable suggestions for adopting proactive strategies. Uh, now I welcome our second key, uh, third keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Colonel Buniyat Zadeh. Uh, she holds a PhD from the Institute of Philosophy and Sociology of uh, the Azerbaijan National Academy of Sciences. Presently, she is the head of the Department of Islamic Philosophy. Between 2016 to 2017, uh, Professor Buniyat Zadeh was a visiting professor at the 29th Mayas University, Istanbul, Turkey. She is the vice president of the Asian Philosophical Association, a member of the International Network of Women Philosophers. Uh, Dr. Buniyat Zadeh is an author of several books and articles on comparative philosophy between the East and the West, philosophy of Sufism, philosophy of Islam, philosophy of religion, philosophy of music, phenomenology. Uh, Dr. Buniyat Zadeh applied Islamic philosophy to philosophical counseling and completes her philosophical views in her system, Sufi phenomenology. Uh, Madam, I request you to please deliver your speech. Thank you very much. And first of all, I would like to congratulate my colleagues from Pakistan, from Turkey, and from Azerbaijan uh, by hosting this valuable conference. I think and I hope that this conference will be, uh, this is a beginning, it will be only a beginning uh, point, beginning step in our collaboration. And I hope that this uh, Congress, this conference, uh, will be very valuable for all of us. I would like to speak about the problems of modern philosophy, the ideals and reality of modern philosophy, and about the crisis of uh, philosophy. Uh, the development way of the nations is not always easy. It's the law of history. Only a nation that believes in itself and recognizes its essence can cross the difficult stages of life. The philosophy has a special mission in this process to help the human being thinking and self-knowledge. Indeed, philosophy is undergoing catharsis. Ideas, principles are revised repeatedly. It's difficult to define that is uh, what is previous. The, uh, the moral and mental crisis of the human being or the philosophy. There were several crises in history and the solution to these problems was in the thought of the human being. He should clean the whole view of the world and himself from all external and temporal factors 
and determines the unchangeable selves. It's the mission of philosophy. Indeed, philosophy has always been at risk, both and in antiquity and now, like a human being. Uh, however, in supports of Descartes, since thinking is the essence of human existence, this means that the ability to think or philosophy cannot be destroyed. It's difficult to say a new world in philosophy. On the one hand, we need to hear and understand previous philosophical views. On the other hand, we must see a holistic view of society and determine the internal connection between modern and historical periods. Third, we must find the right word that will be heard in the future. Otherwise, our world, our world will be limited to one insignificant uh, article and disappear among the pages of a journal or a book. As known from the history of philosophy, the complete philosophical systems were the results of the deep crisis in the society and the moral decay of the people. In other words, the philosophy of great philosophers was the internal requirement of the period. Today, humanity is again experiencing a crisis, political, economic, moral, and mental. Who is a philosopher? Is it too hard to answer? Uh, is he a monk sitting in the lotus position and thinking only about the hidden uh, secrets of life? Or is he a superman of Nietzsche which is ready to destroy everything for building a perfect society. Or maybe Maxim Gorky's Danko, which lights the way of his ungrateful people from the darkness by his heart. At last, as Plutarch said, if philosophers consider their greatest merit to time primitive cruelty in human morals, then Alexander the Great, who re-educated a great many tribes should just be considered the greatest philosopher. His, the philosopher, is the one who illuminates the darkness, systematizes the chaos, and cleans the wisdom of temporary information. Another name of the crisis of philosophy is a gap between its ideals and realities. It means that as a philosophy has become too distant from society or has lost touch with the divine world, the eternal source of ideas. In other words, uh, when the connection between consciousness and belief faith is lost, it affects the thinking of human being. Therefore, to analyze the essence of crisis in philosophy, we will consider consciousness and belief. Today, the humanity lives in information chaos. The creator of the information and consequently, this cause is a human being. However, the human being lives under the rule and acts under the dictation of this cause. As Kant said, there is nothing sublime about being subject to the moral law, but this person is also a giver of this law. That's why he is subject to it, and only to that extent is he sublime. The end of the citation. If we change the moral with the information, it will be a clear view of modern reality. The human being is a slave of the information that was created by himself. The knowledge is received only as information, but this fact increases its influence and power. Karl Jaspers wrote in his philosophical autobiography, the philosophy cannot understand its essence and equates itself with science, we have to, uh, we have to return it to itself. Uh, the end of citation. From the time of Jasper's technology possibilities have expanded and the influence of information has increased. It focuses attention on the surrounding world and a human being sees himself only as a part of information. In other words, Instead of improving and self-knowledge, a human being adapts himself to the temporal requirements of society and is lost in the chaos. As a result, a human being, instead of concentrating around his core and essence, 
disintegrates and the spirit stays alone like philosophy, which ha was a basis for every science and state alone today. A human being is alone among all technologies, social networks, and information chaos. Indeed, everybody who knows the power of philosophy tries to write the philosopher of his speciality. As a result of these efforts, various branches of philosophy were born such as uh, philosophy of politics, economics, feminism, even war. Surprisingly, such new trends increased and uh, the very essence of philosophy is relegated to the background. Every branch is only a word or an idea in philosophy, but not a philosophy itself. Paradoxically, the number of sciences and methods studying man is increasing but the problems of humanity are also growing. A person who can research distant stars and, stars and lies of the earth cannot know himself. Who can write ancient history cannot know what will happen in 15 minutes. As the hero of Bulkakov, Mr. Wallen said, to rule, you need to have a clear plan developed for some reasonable time ahead, let me ask you, how can a person manage his own affairs if he is not only unable to make a plan for some ridiculously short time, for example, a thousand years, but also cannot even predict what will happen to him tomorrow? Indeed, the ideal ability of a person is to know his now, due to his life experience and knowledge and move to the next consciously and without any problems. Another cause of the human being crisis is a COVID-19 pandemic. About a year and a half, a human being has been closed, not at home, but in himself. All material things for what a person fought during his life lost their value finding himself in emptiness and losing everything. He fell into depression. The sudden conclusion made the man stay face to face and remember a long forgotten trust himself. The answers are different. Was this imprisonment a grace or a punishment? When he saw death so close to him, the man remembered his face, his belief which has been somewhere in the background. He believed that the only one more powerful than the virus is the creator. When he remembered this, his inner world, the prison became white and brighter. The human being discovered himself again. Faith is not only an object of religion, but also of philosophy. Indeed, the starting point of any crisis, especially moral and mental, is a loss of faith. Maybe a person lost faith uh, when he considered himself right and the creator wrong. The framework of religion was too small for human dreams. Therefore, a man wanted to appropriate all the powers of the creator. He considered himself and the abilities of reason to be broader than divine wisdom. It was the culmination of the loss of belief and the initial stage of a crisis of mind. The human being was looking for a new object of worship and chose his mind. Through the sciences and technology, the human being started to change nature, faith, and himself. Paradoxically, a man who escaped his slavery of religion created a new master for himself. Birdiai wrote, a new and mysterious force, a alien to both man and nature, now makes its appearance in human life. And this is said, a natural and non-human element acquires a terrible power over both man and nature. Mankind desiring absolute power cannot create out of anything, but can crush and destroy. Thus, he lost faith in the temporal and crushed world and mind 
that cannot prevent the process of dehumanization. So Husserl, the philosopher, considers that along with this false the faith in absolute reason, through which the world has its meaning, the faith in the meaning of history, of humanity, the faith in man's freedom, that is his capacity to secure rational meaning for his individual and common human existence. If a man loses his faith, it means nothing less than the loss of faith in himself, in his true being. This true being is not something he always uh, already has with the self evidence of the I am, but something he only has and can have in the form of the struggle for his trust, the struggle to make himself true. The philosopher can describe the whole picture of the 20th century uh, such the crushed ideals of the rational human being who has also lost faith in God and self-confidence. I think the culmination of this process was the psycho psychoanalysis of Sigmund Freud. Uh, Jung analyzing the views of Freud wrote, like an Old Testament prophet, he undertook to overthrow false gods, to rip their veils away from a mass of dishonesties and hypocrisies, mercilessly exposing the rottenness of the contemporary psyche. He did not falter in the face of the unpopularity such an enterprise entailed. Indeed, the process of ripping off the veil from the mass of dishonor and hypocrisy was a visible part, the tip of the iceberg. So the man's face changed him. Unconsciously, he began to resemble a small and temporary objects of worship. Human history has come to this point, face to face with his rotten faith and depressing morality. Hence, this is the reason for the weakness before the pandemic. In conclusion, says philosophy is power. There are three stages to obtaining this power. The first stage is the cleansing of consciousness from all temporary and alien influences and the cognition of faith. It will help establish a connection between rational thinking and spiritual experience. The second stage is the restoration of inner harmony through these relationships. Why restore? Because the person was born with this harmony and lost it under the pressure of material requirements and conditions. And the third and final stage is to look at the world through this harmony and transmit it in all actions. Life uh, creation worldview. We did not offer any particular way of out the crisis. We propose to think only about the relationship between ideals and the related uh, realities of philosophy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Uh, Colonel Bunyazade. It was really a thought-provoking discussion and uh, good, good uh, things to know from you. Now I request Dr. Samina Sarwat, PhD Linguistics, HOT Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Khaja Farid University of Engineering and Information Technology, Rahim Yar Khan, for closing remarks. Uh, good noon, everyone. Uh, rather, it's uh, good morning. Uh, in this very first session, uh, five people joined us. Uh, there was uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, Raza Al Mustafa, who uh, delivered his welcome note. Uh, then, uh, Professor Dr. Suleiman Tahir, Vice Chancellor, Kajafri, the University of Engineering and Information Technology, Rahimiyar Khan, joined us and he delivered his uh, welcome speech. Then there were three key keynote speakers. Uh, first of all, Professor Navzit uh, Terhan uh, delivered his speech. Uh, he's 
uh, he is a psychiatrist and uh, a founding director of Uskordu University. Then after him, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ziaul Haq uh, delivered his uh, speech and uh, at the end, Professor Dr. Kunal uh, Baniyad Sadi uh, delivered her speech. Actually, this was a wonderfully excellent session and uh, we are truly thankful to everyone who volunteered their time uh, for the first session of uh, the first international conference on modern trends of humanities and social sciences. I would like to extend special thanks to our guest speakers, uh, our brilliant and outstanding guest speakers who made this session memorable uh, for everyone. I hope participants have learned a lot and they got benefited. Uh, from your expertise. There were uh, a lot of new things which we learned from this session uh, because all the experts uh, have specialties in their respective fields. And this was uh, a wonderful exchange of ideas. So thank you very much, all the guest speakers, all the panelists. Uh, for uh, making this session wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Samina Sarwat, uh, for cl closing remarks. I am again thankful to uh, Dr. Shahid, uh, his team members, uh, for, and the organizing, uh, all the organized uh, institutions, the Academic Research and Policy Development Foundation, National um, Academy of uh, Sciences, Baku, Azerbaijan, Uskadar University, Istanbul, Khaja Farid University, and Azerbaijan Institute of Theology for providing us such uh,